So this example is a simplified game of craps. Um, craps is a game where you, you roll a pair of dice, and then based on what the roll on that dice is, um, you get a certain amount of payout depending on whether you've placed certain bets. Um, I've only actually played craps once uh, in my life. It was, it was at my bachelor party at Foxwoods. Um, it was awesome. I actually did get on a hot streak for like, I don't know, it, it felt like five minutes, but it was probably more like 45 seconds. Um, anyway, uh, so it's a lot of fun. And in, in craps, in our simplified version of the game craps, so this is very much simplified, um, the two amounts that you want to get on your dice uh, are either seven or 11. Um, those are the, the sort of the magic numbers. If you roll them, then you automatically win something. Um, so in our simplified game, we're going to roll two dice, and if the total on those two dice comes up seven or it comes up 11, then we're going to win $10. Otherwise, we win nothing. So it's kind of like the coin flip example, but there's more than one possibility for how to win, right? We could get a seven and win, we could get an 11 and win, uh, or if I get anything else, then I don't win. And my question is, how much should we be willing to pay to play this game? If there's a chance that we could win $10, how much risk are we willing to take in order to play this game? So let me start by asking you, what information do we need to make this decision in an informed fashion? What do we need to know? How much do we have to pay to go in? All right, so that's one thing, and that's actually going to be the answer that I'm hoping that you all will come up with. But, so this is the information that we need. This is our risk. Uh, we also know what our potential reward is. What is that? Ten, Ten bucks. So we know what our risk, well, we don't know what our risk is, but we know what our potential reward could be. What else do we need to know in order to make this an informed decision? We have a two out of 12 chance Right. Well, it's not exactly 2 out of 12, for reasons I'll, I'll show you in a moment. But we need to know those chances, right? Right. We want to know what is the probability of rolling a 7. And we also need to know what's the probability of rolling an 11. And then, of course, we also need to know what's the probability of rolling anything else. Those are the three, now, probabilities that are going to bear upon our decision. Because if I roll a seven, then I win. I get 10 bucks. If I roll an 11, then I win. Again, 10 bucks. If I roll anything else, I, I get nothing. I, I lose. My uh, amount of winnings are zero. Uh, so, uh, so to figure out what these probabilities are, my favorite way of, of, of doing that is to look at this little chart. This little chart shows you all of the possible different outcomes that can happen when you roll two six-sided dice. Um, we've colored one of the dice red and the other dice green. Um, and because there are six different possibilities that can come up every time we roll these dice, uh, for each dice, um, there's a total of six times six, or 36, different possible outcomes from rolling these two dice, right? Um, one possible outcome is that the red die comes up two and the green die comes up three. That outcome is shown right here in the table and so forth. Um, so this little diagram I can use to help me figure out what the probabilities of 7 and 11 are because each one of the 36 outcomes in this little grid has an equal chance at happening. Because if our dice are fair, the red die has an equal chance of coming up any one of one through six. The green die has an equal chance of coming up every one of one through six. So what are the different ways that I can roll a seven on two dice? A one and six, a three and a four, and a two and a five, right? And so I'm going to hunt through this table and find all of those different outcomes. So here are my seven outcomes. I could roll a one and a six. And there are actually two different ways in the table to do that. There's one up here in the upper right, where the red die is 1 and the green die is 6. But then there's also one down here in the lower left, where it's interchanged, where the red die is 6 and the green die is 1. So there's two possibilities for how to roll a 7. Um, another possibility is a 2 and a 5, which can happen in two different ways. A 2 on the red die and a 5 on the green, and vice versa. So there's another way to roll a 7, two other ways to roll a 7. And the last one is 4s and 3s. And there are, again, two ways of rolling a four and a three. Three on red, four on green, and vice versa. So how many different outcomes are there in this grid that give us a roll of seven? 
There are six out of 36. Yeah, I like how you put that because that actually tells us how to compute this probability. Six out of 36. So that's the probability of rolling a seven right, on a set of two dice. Um, is we, because there are six different ways to get a seven on a pair of two dice out of 36 different possibilities, the probability of a seven is six out of 36. So based on that analysis, would you say that outcome of 11 is more likely or less likely than a roll of seven? Why is 11 less likely? Yeah, there's actually only two different outcomes in this grid that lead to a roll of, of 11. What are they? A six and a five, so six on red and, and five on green. Five. And a five and a six, five on red, six on green. So there's actually only two outcomes in this grid that give us an 11, so what's the probability of rolling an 11 look like? Two out of 36. Two out of 36. So as fractions, those are the probabilities of rolling uh, respectively a seven and an 11. Um, if we wanted to, uh, if we wanted to make this fraction into a decimal, we could. This would be about 0.1667 or so as a decimal. Um, two out of 36. So two out of 36 as a decimal reduces to 0 0.05556, just rounding that last digit off. Um, by the way, what then is the probability of rolling anything else in this grid that's not a 7 or an 11? How many outcomes are there in this grid which were not a 7 and not an 11? Twenty-eight. How do you know it's twenty-eight? Right. We had eight outcomes in the table that we like. Eight outcomes that lead us to winning. But out of thirty-six, the outcomes that don't lead us to winning are thirty-six minus eight, or twenty-eight. So twenty-eight out of thirty-six different ways not to win uh, at this game. And if I reduce that down, uh, that's fourteen out of eighteen. That's uh, seven out of nine. So that's, I believe, you'll have to double check me on this. 0.7778. Okay, so we now have a complete set of information that we would need in order to balance those two forces. The risk, which is what we're trying to figure out, what should our amount of risk be? Um, the reward, the $10 that we could win by playing, and the likelihood of those different outcomes happening. Now we know all that information. So how do we find the expected value, the expected amount that we could win by playing this game? So the first step in computing an expected value is to multiply. What am I going to multiply? Right. So I'll multiply the amount that I could win by the probability of winning that amount. So 0.1667 multiplied by 10 bucks, that's going to be $1.67. I'm just going to round that off to the penny. Um, and then likewise, with the possibility of rolling an 11, multiply that by that. Um, that there is going to give me 55, 56 cents. And again, round that to the penny. Um, and then the easier multiplication to do, 0.7778 multiplied by zero. Yeah, I love multiplying by zero. It's the best. It's almost as good as multiplying by one. All right, so there are our three products. The, the product of the amount of winnings multiplied by the probability of that winning actually happening. And then how do we get the expected value out of that? Now that we've done all the multiplying? Yeah. The expected value we would get just by adding $1.67 plus 56 cents plus zero. Um, and that's gonna come up with $2.23. So that number is our expected value. Um, and again, the meaning of that number is that if I came to play this game and I played this game 100 times, then on average, what I would expect to happen is that I would win $2.23 per game. So if I played this game 100 times, I would expect to win $223 out of this. So that means that the amount I'm willing to risk to play this game should not be any larger than 223 per game. Because if it is, I'm probably
probably going to walk away with less money on average if I play this game over and over again. So how much am I willing to pay to play? 223. Anything greater than that, and I don't want to play. Anything less than that, and it's probably a good idea to play because I have a chance of walking. I, have, I would expect to walk away with more than I had to pay. <laughs>